My name is Sahira, and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. Hey, Zillstar. In this video, I wanted to take you through a little bit of theory to help you understand why we use all of these different sounds. Now, most likely if you're here, you're already a convert and you get it, right? You understand that these are a musical instrument and only using one sound would be like only playing one note on the piano, right? It doesn't make any sense. You can't create as much if you don't utilize the instrument to its fullest, right? So we get it. We understand it's way more interesting. It's a lot more fun. We can express ourselves a lot more. But this little tidbit, this idea I'm going to share with you today, I learned several years ago and it sort of blew my mind. And this is when I, I burned the boats, right? They talk about if you want to learn something new or if you want to make a change in your life, or let's say make a change in your Zill playing, you have to burn the boats and you cannot allow yourself to return to the island upon which you came, right? From which you came. You have to just commit to it. And this, this idea made me realize like how folly it was to consider only playing with a single sound and to continue moving forward like that. So I wanted to share this idea with you. So if we only use one sound, a lot of our basic bass belly dance rhythms, these Arab rhythms that we know, that we love, that we use in our dance, if we come at them as finger cymbal players, as dancers, and we decide to articulate them with finger cymbals that use only one sound, all of the rhythms are actually identical. There is no difference to them at all. And now I don't mean all of the Arab rhythms, but I'm going to give you three today that are very common that we use all the time. Some of which are, you know, very tied to a folkloric uh, structure and a folkloric idea of dance. But if we play, say, with all the bass stroke or all the ring or whatever our sound of preference is, if we play all three of these rhythms with a single sound, all three of them are exactly the same rhythm. Is that like, are you catching this? Like it completely eliminates three rhythms and it makes it just one monolith of a rhythm that doesn't have the nuance that the rhythms originally had. So the three rhythms I'm speaking about specifically are Belody, which we use all the time, right? We use it all the time. Saidi, which is another one of my favorites and very much tied to a folkloric uh Form, right? We use a lot of the Saidi footwork, the music. We, we understand, we know it, we love it. We know that it's from the Said region. We know that some of the steps that we utilize with this form are different. And then also the Maksum, which is another rhythm that pops up all the time in our dancing. If we play these three rhythms, either the bass rhythm or a filled rhythm of some sort, as a single stroke idea, they all sound exactly the same. Right. So I'm not saying that you can't play them with all rings or all bases. And I did for many, 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 many years. And it was fun. And I could zill along with stuff. And I still sometimes play with all rings or all base, base, uh, you know, clacks or whatever, because I'm having fun and I'm playing along. And a lot of times if I'm playing to music or in a loud situation or, you know, at a Renaissance festival where there's a lot of sound happening, I'm going to use the louder sounds because the nuance is lost. But because you're here, because I know you care and because I love you. I want to share with you what I learned so that you understand how important it is to explore these sounds and to be able to use them when the occasion calls for it. So let's check out these three rhythms, the Belody, the Saidi, and the Maksum. I have them written out here for you because I think it like makes a lot more sense if you can see them and hear them at the same time. So if we're counting them, they are all four count rhythms, right? They all fit within four counts. You'll also notice that they all start with a doom and they all end with a tech. And then they've got some dooms and techs thrown in in the middle, but this is where it's different, right? And this is where the importance comes in. We're gonna look at just the open version right now. If we look first at the Belody, which might be the one that you're most familiar with, it's definitely of the three, the one that I learned first, we're looking at doom, doom, tech, doom, tech, doom, doom, tech, doom, Tech, right? So we get two dooms at the beginning, a tech and a doom in the middle, and then a tech at the end. The way it is counted is one and and three, four, one and and three, four, where I'm trying to modulate my voice so that the dooms are lower and the techs are higher so you can hear where they fit. Yeah. Doom, doom, tech, doom, tech, one and and three, four, one and and three, 
four, or if I were to play that on the finger symbol, I invite you to join me, it would be Yeah, that's our melody. Of course, we typically fill it in and we do our doom, doom, tek a tek, doom, tek a tek. We know that, right? But that's the melody. Doom, doom, tek, doom, tek, one and, and three, four. Let's look at the slaidi. Slaidi starts with a doom and a tek. And then there's a double doom, doom, doom. And that's what makes it slaidi for me. I love that double doom, doom, doom. Ends with the tek, tek, yeah? So we're looking at doom, tek, doom, doom, tek, doom, tek. Doom, doom, tech. Now, the way you count this is one and, and three, four, one and, and three, four. Did you notice something? If you're listening closely, the way it's counted is exactly the same as the way the melody is counted. If you ignore my low and high and my voice, right? They're both one and, and three, Four. The important strokes of both the melody and the slaidi happen on one and and three four, right? So if I'm playing them with just a single open ring, they're the same thing. They don't sound any different because they're both one and and three four, right? So if I play my slaidi now, just the open with the dooms and the techs, right? Doom tech. Doom, doom, tech. It'll sound like this on the finger symbols. I invite you to join me. Seven, eight. Yes. All right. Let's sweeten the deal here. Let's look at the moksum. The moksum starts with a doom and a tech, just like the Saidi. Then there's a tech doom in the middle, just like the melody. And then it ends with the tech, as all of them do, right? So now we're looking at doom tech, tech doom tech, doom tech, tech doom tech. If we count it, can you guess? It's one n and three, four, one n and three, four, which is exactly the same way that the melody and the slaidi are also counted, right? So if I play it with all rings or all clacks or whatever, it's going to sound exactly the same, which, you know, depending on what you're, what you're aiming for, maybe is not the end of the world, but you're cutting yourself off from a whole possibility, a list of possibilities of endless amounts of expression, and all those three rhythms would become the same thing, right? So let's go ahead now and play the moksum, just the open, doom tech, Tech, doom, tech, five, six, here we go. It's ring, ring, yeah. Yes, do you see where I'm coming from here? So when I learned this idea, it changed my mind completely about whether or not it was like worth it to do all these different sounds with finger symbols like yeah it's cool but if i am i ever going to use them like i understood that this instrument was built with all of those sounds on purpose it's a percussion instrument and it, we are going to use it to flavor this music from the arab world that we know and love and if we're going to do it justice it's a really awesome idea to use all the sounds so that we really can use it to its full potential so I would love to hear from you. Have you been using multiple sounds in your Zill playing? I didn't for years, not because I didn't want to, but I was never really taught to, right? It was something that I learned a little bit later in my belly dance career. And I'm so grateful for it because it's opened up so much potential, so much possibility for these little instruments that we wear on the tips of our fingers. I would love to know, did you learn something new today? Do you use these three rhythms when you Zill? And I'm guessing if you've been Zilling with only one sound, Maybe you aren't even sure which one you've been using, right? Because they're all the same. So I'm really hoping that this opens you up to the idea of what multiple sounds on the Zills can unlock for you. And I hope that you will join me in learning more about it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that I can send you more belly dance and finger symbol content regularly. If you would like to take your Zilling to the next level, I would love for you to jump in. You can check out my, I have a basic Zill Star Jumpstart course that will get you going if you are fairly new to the Zills. You can find that at sahirabellydances.com slash Zillstar, or if you go to my online studio at 
sahirabellydances.teachable.com, I have an even more delicious Zills monthly subscription that is full of lessons just like these to help you take your zilling to the next level. I would love to see you there.